Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here, just spending my spring break, you know, having a day off, you know, going out, relaxing, do whatever I want, you know, just after, you know, taking my physical therapy, following my diet, and of course taking my cycling class, you know, I'm just keeping up. <laughs> but, I did want to see a movie this week, and I've been looking forward to it, uh, ever since for this was definitely my most anticipated one and I didn't know it came out but thank God it did I went to see the movie Missing Link yeah I just got the poster at my local theater where I went to see it and yes this is the Sasquatch right there <laughs> which he's nicknamed Susan even though they call him Mr. Link <laughs> Well, yeah, that, that's just a secret behind that. Um, yeah, this is the latest uh, movie from Leica Entertainment, the same company that gave us Coraline, along with Paranorman, The Box Trolls, and Cuba and the Two Strings. Yeah. And this is, of course, the first film that is not released by Focus Features, but it's released by the production company called Annapurna Pictures. The same production company that gave us films like Zero Dark Thirty, as well as uh, Her, American Hustle, among others. That's owned by uh, Megan Ellison. It's also uh, part of a joint venture with MGM, with Orion Pictures joining in to form United Artists Releasing. Yeah, this is a new company that's... Um, also part of uh, United Artists Corporation just uses its name which was formerly known as Mirror it was a new uh, distribution so I guess they want to continue to um, start releasing more films while being part of it but it's nice to know that um, they had a new company to release this um, unfortunately it's not doing quite well at the box office as I was hoping, sadly. I wish it was doing so well because it only made 13.6 million so far. Um, so I think at this point on it's, it's, it's having the worst opening box office wise. I know, I hate it when they do this because this was released uh, last week on April 12th, <clears throat> the same time as that unnecessary reboot of Hellboy which I am definitely not looking forward to it because I know David Harbour from Stranger Things is playing the role as much as I love him that doesn't mean I want to anticipate it because after all I've, I've been a huge fan of the first two films with Ron Perlman <laughs> you can't talk him um, also on the back of this poster, yeah, I'm sorry I had to go a little off topic here, but this is where you see uh, Mr. Link. <laughs> this is where it has some games here, like the family tree, and spot the differences on any of these uh, pictures around. You see the explorer right there, along with uh, his girlfriend, former girlfriend, who's an adventurer. All right here. <laughs> So it's Sir Lionel Frost, Mr. Link, and Aldelina. So, <laughs> all right here. So yeah, you can actually find this at uh, your local feeder if they still carry them. So it's nice to have that. Um, but um, I saw it with uh, my cousin, along with my sister, and we had a good time. Um, you know, we just need to spend time, you know, doing something. So we were also going to uh, Five Below as well. That's where I got my headphones. Some brand new headphones right here. Because <laughs> my old headphones got ruined. You know, the one I got from Ross. Uh, as I show you a long time ago, when I was going there. Yeah, got broken. Not working anymore. <sighs> Cheap, I know. <laughs> And I also got some more Blu-rays and that I found there for five bucks, so it was worth it. 
I even got the Stranger Fiends posters <laughs> to go with it. Well, anyway, another good movie. I mean, let's face it, Leica just keeps getting better and better with every film with their story to tell, so they know they're following it. I just wish these days, you know, these films could do so well, and that's what I'm afraid of. But I'm, I'm hoping they'll still continue to do more. Anyway, the story is about an English explorer who spotted uh, a Sasquatch creature and was ready to take him to his Yeti cousins in the Himalayas. Um, it stars Hugh Jackman from the X-Men movies, best known for playing Wolverine, Zach Galifianakis from all the Hangover films and other comedies, Zoe Zadana from Guardians of the Galaxy movies, among others, even the J.J. Abrams uh, Star Trek reboot with the series alone, Stephen Fry, Timothy Orphant from the HBO TV series Deadwood, as well as films like The Girl Next Door and Live Free, and Live Free or Die Hard, you know, the fourth Die Hard sequel, plays the villain. Emma Thompson, who has an extensive career, been in films like um, Howard's Inn, along with The Remains of the Day, and The Name of the Father, among others. Arreta Akaria, uh, Mac Lucas, David Walliams, Chin Baldez uh, Aran, Humphrey Kerr, Adam Godley, Nick Dickelson, and Ruskin, Matthew Wolf, and Darren Witcherson. And it's written and directed by Chris Butler, who did Paranorman, also from Leica. The movie begins where we meet an English explorer who is a struggling investigator of mythical creatures named Sir Lionel Frost, who is played by Hugh Jackman, you know, boy spy, has continued his search for different creatures to study and announce their presence in the world, had to work with an assistant, such as taking a picture of <laughs> a Loch Ness monster that's at sea, which led to trouble because, well, his assistant almost got killed, eaten by the monster, until he had to save his life. And apparently, he quit. So, but part of this um, journey was that he would allow them to accept into a society of other great men around. All which are led by Frost's rival, Lord Pigot Dumby, who's voiced by Stephen Fry. Frost receives a letter acknowledging the presence of a Sasquatch. That's, so he decided to make a deal with Dungby that it will allow him to join the society if he proves that the creature exists. Yeah. Meaning that it might be real. So I had to show them a, a Bigfoot uh, sculpture with the letter and all the others so that they might be able to find it. But Dungby actually <laughs> broke into pieces with his cane. So, therefore, Frost had to travel to the Pacific Northwest where he stumbles upon a Sasquatch in the forest, which is dubbed as Mr. Link, coming from him. But Frost is being told by that Sasquatch that uh, he was in fact the one who actually sent him the letter because he needed his help. And by the way, Mr. Link is voiced by <laughs> um, Zach Galifianakis. So his request was to help Frost uh, try to find his relatives, you know, the Yeti cousins in the Himalayas, hoping that he'll be able to stay there forever. But Frost definitely agrees to help, but he was known to the fact that Dunsby has hired a bounty hunter named Willard Stink, who's voiced by Timothy Orphan, to track Frost down 
and kill him, ensuring that he'll never be real cool to society again. That's when Frost and Mr. Link had went to the local saloon where Willard, Willard appeared with his gun on his hand, and that's what led to a huge fight and a sh <laughs> and a shootout. <laughs> So, afterwards, uh, Frost's old lover, a girlfriend who's a adventurer named Adelina Fortnite, voiced by Zoe Sedona, has a map to the Himalayas locked inside a safe that belongs to her late husband. So Frost decided to go to Fortnite Mansion to acquire the map, but she sees through his charm and deception both Frost and Mr. Link decided to break in at night, you know, taking the safe and throw it out of the window. Yeah, of course, Mr. Link actually had trouble trying to get up there, and when he finally did, you know, <laughs> he was trying his best to get the safe, and it was hard to have him push in there around and throw it out. Just woken up. Um, uh, Alina. So, they basically cracked it open, finally got the map, but was ready to be attacked once they escape. <laughs> but, they were, they were actually spotted the next day by Alina, who allowed them to search for the Yetis as long as she is there to accompany them. So, they're trying to catch a train, you know, they were actually in the skies, yeah. <laughs> yeah, Frost was uh, dressed up as a nun, and <laughs> uh, along with Mr. Link, you know, dressing up as a person. So, at that point on, yeah, Willer was about to go after them as well, but he had to change the pants for Frost. Decided to go straight to um, another location, so they had to take uh, the boat. You know, trying to get to uh, the Himalayas, somewhere in Sham uh, Shambhala. So once they made the journey, um, Fortnite, yeah, Alina confronts Frost about his behavior and shows him how much Mr. Link believes in him. So they, Frost actually enjoys a heartwarming talk with Mr. Link on the boat's deck, which this is where we get a secret behind Mr. Link's name, and this is what he wanted to be called by a woman's name, Susan. <laughs> but they're being ambushed by Willard, going after them, and they're trying to trying to escape as soon as they can. Um, Adelina fall off, um, hanging on to the boat while Mr. Link was trying to trying to go over there and, and tries to uh, you know save her. Yeah, you know, trying to find a way to just you know be able to catch her by actually dumping in the lifesaver that didn't work. So he had to go all the way down near all the windows and he had trouble and then he finally uh, catches her. But um, Frost is being chased down by Willard and the rest of the gang go gained up to him. So they all escaped and they by taking out um, a small boat and was ready to uh, <laughs> to get there as fast as they can to to cross um, the, the Yeti temple. So this is where they meet a Yeti and their elders, that um, you know, they, which is uh, the grand, the grandmother of a young woman who has a child. So just you know, just, they're just sitting there, you know, trying to ask some questions, you know, where the the cousins are, and meanwhile they're having some soup, some cookies, and <laughs> and tea. And they were on their way, you know, going all the way up um, to the icy mountains. And that's when they found 
Himalayas in Shamala. But that didn't seem to work out there because it seemed like they just couldn't accept uh, Mr. Link. So they wound up getting trapped inside by all the Yeti guards and just put them inside the hole until they find a way to escape since they're not going to be able to stay with them all this time because they know they're just going to be trapped and they're just going to capture them. So they're about to escape just before um, Dumby along with Willard and the rest are about to go chase after them as opposed to being chased by the Yeti, the Yeti guards uh, along with uh, the Yeti elder who's the leader of the Yetis you know, voiced by Emma Thompson because he's the one that's not accepting them so this was what led to the uh, the icy cliff side that led to danger and when you know it, uh, they were safe. Well, except for these other guys. So they thought to themselves that since nothing's working out for them, they decided, you know, they're going to start working together as a team. So now, um, instead of having to deal with the society being part of it, now Frost decided to work together as a team with uh, Mr. Link, or Susan. <laughs> And even join in with Adelina. So now they get to continue exploring some more creatures and, and becoming best friends together. Yeah. So, very fascinating movie. Loved it. Uh, once again, with the stop motion animation that's uh, well done, well made, took them hours and hours to put them all together with all the movements, with 3D technology together. It just really works, and I love that. I mean, let's face it, I mean, Travis Knight's production team just joined in and put all the pieces together and just have fun having to uh, create uh, all the puppetry of all the movements of the characters, you know, doing what they do, do whatever, everything. And I love the characters. I mean, you definitely get a uh, <laughs> an investigator who's an explorer too, just struggles this hard to find all these creatures around, and you know, sometimes troubles ahead. But you know, he wants to be remembered by by the society of, of this entire club that he joins in and before he gets to meet uh, the Sasquatch, uh, Bigfoot himself, Mr. Link. <laughs> but she, he was also very kind, gentle too, and very sweet and innocent, trying to find his relatives, but you know he always has trouble you know having to <laughs> wear all the suits because he's so big or having to sit down <laughs> at the train station or any place almost ready to <laughs> to break the seats or, or bounce over because <laughs> he's very huge <laughs> very big and tubby and hairy too um, also um, Frost's girlfriend Alina was uh, very uh, intelligent smart um, very fierce too as I could see and fierce spirited but just doesn't get along much with Frost at times until they, they learn to trust each other that sort of thing but then you get the villain who's a bounty hunter who's blood and thirsty yeah Willard Stink who's actually the one who who's being hired by Dumpy you know, who happens to be a very prideful, snobbish head of the Society of Great Men, being the rival for Frost. Because he wanted to stop his quest and end it this way for all eternity. 
Um, but I definitely love all the moments here and there. I mean, we're, all the funny bits and <laughs> and everything involving the Frost and <laughs> Mr. Link. But hey, <laughs> they were, you know they they always get to know each other very well. So it was cool. Um, has a great score by uh, Carter uh, Burrell. You know the same uh, composer who has done all the some of the the Corn Brothers films. You know, like for example, uh, uh, Fargo, among others. So it's, it has a nice score. Um, they even had a a nice song. Um, called Dibidita uh, uh, Friend Like Me something like that um, yeah that was a nice song at the end credits um, a beautiful cinematography by Chris Peterson yeah he puts it all together you know for the art of stop motion puppetry all edited perfectly by Stephen Perkins some smart writing and direction by Chris Butler. He definitely knows what he's doing. And he's really having fun with it. Just like how he had fun with Paranorman. Yeah. And excellent voice acting work by the talents of Hugh Jackman, Zach Galifianakis, and Zoe Zadana, among others. I mean, they did a very good job uh, portraying the roles of these characters. I mean... There's times when Adelina sounds a little bit sort of like a uh, cross between uh, Gail Godot or, or in some cases, uh, <laughs> some of Hayek. But I'm even surprised it was so Sedona the whole time. Because, you know, she is uh, Hispanic as well. You know, part of uh, her family. So even I couldn't even tell that was her. <laughs> But I could definitely tell that was Hugh Jackman uh, doing the voice of Frost. I mean, trying to get away from his uh, Wolfman persona and just going into something more different. Sort of, I guess you could say sort of a, a, a persona for the role in, in the, the, the Greatest Showman. So, sort of way. Zagalophonicus so sounds quite different compared to his character in The Hangover, or in any other comedy, so. But he tried to make some more sweet and innocent, and very gentle and kind, so I love that. And I love how uh, Timothy Orphan portrays uh, the bounty hunter, Willard Stank. Sounds more Clint Eastwood-ish. <laughs> yeah, western type. It's always cool. Um, but the rest of the cast, superb. Check this movie out. You're going to love it. I mean, if you love all the Leica Entertainment films like Coraline, Paranorman, Cuban of Two Strains, even the Box Trolls for that matter, and Course Bride, you're going to love this one. You know, it's the best so far this year. So anyway, that's Missing Link. And I give it five stars. I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.